Hello gamers, today I'm going to show you how to install new thermal compound into a computer or well thermal paste as everybody calls it. Now I'm going to be using a desktop because as you can see it's much easier to take apart but I'm going to be showing you how to do thermal paste inside a computer. So here's how you're going to do it. First thing you're going to do is you're going to take the computer apart. Now this is a desktop so it's self-explanatory, very easy. You just either pull a handle if it's like a pre-built or if your case does that or you remove some screws which if you have a custom-built computer you probably have a case that uses screws and a lot of pre-builds do too but on this computer it's just a single panel you pull off so you're going to do that and then we're going to take a look at the CPU heatsink. Now what we're looking at here is the CPU heatsink. Now on a desktop, it's very self-explanatory, very easy to get to. The laptop, on a laptop it's the same idea, but you basically have to remove a lot of stuff to get to it, or you might have to depending on the laptop. So what I would do is look up a YouTube video or a laptop service manual so you know what you're doing so you don't rip off 15 things that you don't need to and rip your laptop up because you had no idea how to take everything apart so on a laptop you're definitely going to want to look up a tutorial on how to do it especially if you've never taken apart a laptop before but on a desktop which is what I'm using here very self-explanatory usually there's a big big heat sink with a fan on it or a fan very close to it, and that is our CPU. Usually it's not like a, a smaller heat sink or a heat sink like on this video card where it's in like the card area. Usually it's in the center of a board, this CPU. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove the screws. Either there's screws or there's clips. And we kind of have to push here with a hand. We can't just spin it because it's not loose enough yet. Then we're going to remove this screw. Actually the better way to do it is you remove like diagonally and it's good practice to get into because this is how we're going to reinstall the heat sink so we're going to remove we're going to remove it and then the last screw we're going to have to pay special attention to that because Basically, this is the one screw holding it on. And we gotta get this out of here. Now, on this one, it wasn't so much of a problem, but sometimes it'll be really leaning towards an end because the screw you didn't remove. So this very easy came right off and we also got to pull this heat sink fan out. Should have done it before but and that's out. Woo! Nice nice. Now I think I replaced the thermal paste inside this computer in the past and I just forgot about it judging by how it feels a little um it basically the thermal paste on this thing feels a little fresh but that's good because that means when I wipe it off it's going to come off a lot easier. Now if you compare that to say a system where it's got like 15 year old, 20 year old, 25 year old thermal paste that feels like glue, well, you're going to run into some issues there because that paste is going to be very stubborn and hard to remove. And to remove that paste, 
I like to use something like Orange Glow. But with this, we don't need Orange Glow. We're just going to remove it with um, we're just going to remove it with uh, some rubbing alcohol and coffee filters. So we got a coffee filter here, rubbing alcohol here, 91%. This is what I usually use, and we're going to be wiping it off. So what I usually do is I like to uh, I like to uh, put it up here, put it like dab a little bit, like just a little teeny bit. Uh, this one's, this is a new bottle, so I gotta open it, as you can see. And what I'll do is I'll dab a teeny tiny bit here, and then I'll wipe it off. So I'm gonna dab it off camera, just a, a little tiny bit, and it's starting to run, but it's all we need to remove paste anyway. So it's it's on here. And this is fresher paste, so it's coming off easily. This one came off easily. Now, if you have like old paste, it's going to require a lot of these. Or you can just use like orange glow, and then if you were like um, either orange glow or goo gone. I use either Orange Glow or Goo Gone, depending on what I've got in the house. And then what we're going to do once that's done, once it's all done with like the Orange Glow, the Goo Gone, then you wipe it down again with rubbing alcohol. So, as you can see, it's coming off great. I don't know if it was like uh, Antec Formula 7 or Arctic Silver 5 or what paste I had on here, but... That's what we're going to do. We're going to wipe this all off. And it's, it's, it's nice and clean now. And when like less and less comes off onto the uh, rag, you know you're good. And the same goes with the heat sink. You're going to do the same thing over here. Now be warned, it's going to be a lot harder on the heat sink. But you do the same thing there. You're going to take the rubbing alcohol, you're going to dab some on here, and then we're going to wipe. And it's going to be a little bit harder on the uh, heat sink end, but as this is fresher paste, it's coming right off. And it's going to be a lot easier if your computer is newer, because the paste is going to be fresher. But well, if we have an old system, it's going to be hard as a rock. And that's what we're going to do. Alright, so once you've cleaned off the CPU and the heatsink, there's two things. The first one is obvious. You don't touch the heatsink or the CPU. The second one is that we're now going to put some thermal paste on here. So I'm going to be using some Antec Formula 7. I like this stuff a lot. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to put it and usually there will be a special way you put it. Either put it horizontally or vertically. You're going to look it up online but usually it doesn't make a difference as you saw from how it was applied. But sometimes it's a dot but you can also do it vertically or horizontally. Pick your way of doing it. So we're going to put it on here and um, could have done it better but that's about as much as you're going to want to put on there not too much and definitely not too much um, I don't think I did too bad putting the paste on here but there's going to be somebody out there who's going to say I could have done it better, honestly, because this is sort of for a video, but usually this is how much I'll put is not all the way to the end of the CPU, just a line, and usually that gets the whole thing. So what we're going to now do is we're going to put the heat sink back in the system. So how we're going to do that is we're going to, um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to, um, we're basically going to put it on on this desktop where the fan cable is so as you can see here 
We're going to put it that way because that's where the fan connector is and we're going to slowly lower it. And now we're going to screw it in slowly. A little bit here. And then on the diagonal side we're going to do it a little bit there. I'm going to zoom it out a little so you can see better. I'm going to do it a little bit here. A little bit there. Now a little bit here. And we're going to want to do it like slowly. Not all the way. You might sometimes get told to do it all the way, but this is how I do it. I do it like a little bit here. A little bit there. little bit there, a little bit there, and the reason you want to do it like diagonally is because that basically ensures the thermal paste gets spread evenly throughout the system. I'm just going to screw it all the way in now. One, because we And basically that's what it does. It ensures that the thermal paste gets spread evenly throughout the CPU. And the same concept goes with desktops, laptops, even if you have like some weird setup like an X clamp on an Xbox, same idea applies. Diagonally. Now we're going to plug the CPU fan back in, which it depends on the system, but it's, it's straightforward. And now we're all good to put the system back together and to fire it up. Now all you're going to do is put the system back together and turn it on to make sure it fires up and works. And as you can see this Dell works great. And we've replaced a the thermal paste in it with some Antec Formula 7 so this thing should last quite a while, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. There we go. This Dell OptiPlex 7010 works great. That's all that needs to be said, gamers. Um, that's how you replace thermal paste in a computer. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.